Welcome to Overcome and Medica Hair Loss. My name is Valerie Fuentes. I'm your host. And today I am with Sydney Marr. She is a multi-passionate entrepreneur. She has done competitive figure skating, fashion design on QVC Worldwide, and now is on a mission to help you live every day fabulous in a healthy, natural way. So thank you, Sydney, for accepting my invitation today. I'm so happy to have you. I'm so excited to be here. When you contacted me and I heard about this beautiful summit that you were having, talking about our self-worth through our journey, I thought, I want in, let me in. So thank you, thank you. Of course, and I totally love your story and how you've overcome the challenges that you've faced in your life. So that's part of the reason why I, why I wanted to have you on the show is to talk about how you how have you handled change and everything that has happened because I know you you had a picture of what your life is going to look like and it turned out to be completely different. So um, tell us a little, a little bit about you, what you're working on right now and how did you, tell us about these challenges, which is, I know it's an amazing story. Oh, thank you. Uh, it is interesting. Today I have um, two companies. I have my Sydney Mar Wellness, which is my high-end vitamins and supplements. Mm -hmm. And that was a journey. And I'll tell the story about how I arrived here because I can tell you that a number of years ago, I would never have imagined that I was going to be the purveyor of vitamins that were loved by actors and actresses and just people like you and me who want to be their healthiest best. And I have a second company where I'm a consultant for product development. I'm a, a business coach and, and uh, sort of entrepreneur who helps people navigate the scary world of entrepreneurship and get their products launched out into the world. But it's really funny because I started out in life as a young figure skater at six years old. I just fell in love with skating and that was really my life. I was happier on the ice than I was, um, you know, just walking. In fact, I still think that walking is a strange and unnatural act. It's like, where are my skates? I, I, I'm much happier on my skates. But as I was uh, doing my competitions and training with uh, world-class coaches, I was getting prepared for the um, next Canadian championship and then supposed to be going international um, and even when I was 13 I had different countries like Japan coming to offer me uh, duo citizenships to represent their country that's I was really good and what happened was I was preparing for one of the competitions and there were two competitive teams on the ice at the same time and I had all of the rights of way and the their young man um, that I collided with uh, he should have given way and instead he kept going and he almost severed my leg. Mm. So super scary. It was like literally having my legs cut out from underneath oh my me. God. My coach saved my life. Um, I was bleeding out. I should have died. Um, it was about 45 minutes before the ambulance came, which means that he really did save my life. And they did the um, emergency surgery. And because I was an elite athlete and we were trained on how to nourish ourselves and how to uh, make ourselves better. And of course, in my head, it was like, I am going back to, to competition. I'm mm -hmm. gonna be the perfect weight. I'm gonna continue my training. I'm going mm -hmm. to get better, but I couldn't walk. My leg kept giving out and my doctors, I was lucky because my doctor was a young sports medicine doctor. And he said, I have the perfect specimen for doing the first micronurse surgery here in Canada. Mm -hmm. He went to the government, they made a deal for having five American uh, doctors come to Canada and they did the first micronurse surgery. They created teaching tapes for the universities and I even had to go to some of the universities and sort of march out on the stage and say, look, I got a leg now. <laughs> and oh, wow. it was amazing. But I also trained for that operation and it took about a year and a half and so when we were talking a little earlier before we started um, on this interview we we're talking about the challenges I've had and and the idea that I really thought I was going to skate until I was about 80 or 90 and mm -hmm. you know that's what I was going to do my whole life it never occurred to me that I was there was going to come a time when I wasn't 
going to have that opportunity to skate. Mm -hmm. And so my recovery from the accident, from the first surgery to having my leg reconstructed was about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And you tell a really overactive 18 year old just to sit there. I mean, even when I came out of the, uh, um, the operation where they're re, um, reconstructing my leg, there was mm -hmm. a nurse who was assigned to me because I was like the, the specimen, right? So she came back. Because I had been nourishing my body before, I sort of woke up. I looked around. I saw there's my pink slippers. I got out of bed, put my fluffy pink slippers, and I was booting it around the, the hospital. And she was she comes to the room and it's like, oh my goodness, like the, the bed's empty. And she had to run around the hospital looking for me because I was so well. And they were shocked at how well I had recovered. And, and I had um, created this, I'm going to say, protein drink that was really super nourishing, that had all of the vitamins and supplements in it to make sure that I was really solid. And that is one of the things that I kept going back to when I segued into fashion, mm. because that's what I, I was lucky. Also, my skating coach had, he, he didn't teach us to be competitive figure skaters. He taught us life lessons. He taught us that these are the things you learn and this is how you apply yourself. So whether or not the metier, the medium, the career, the mm -hmm. thing you're doing changes, you, these lessons go with you. So I didn't have to go back to starting as if I was six years old in fashion. I was 18, 19, getting healthier, getting stronger. And I was really shocked because I went to a couture school. I studied design, merchandising. I won mm -hmm. awards in New York. And I was really shocked at how my career just sort of like it was as if I was on a springboard and I thought I couldn't understand. I thought I've only been in the business for a couple of years. How can this be? Mm -hmm. But what I didn't realize, and this is part of what I want everyone to know is that when they do kind of like hit that wall and there's a big change or a big challenge, there are gifts inside of it. Something that you can never imagine. I would never have imagined I would become an international fashion designer Mm -hmm. selling my fashions all over the world and ha being recognized on the catwalk. You know, when I used to, you know, be in London and go into Harrods or to, um, you know, uh, Harvey Nicks or it was like, oh, Sydney, Sydney, you know, because is, are you on your show later? And it was really fun to, to be acknowledged and recognized. And that is something that when I was laying in my hospital bed that I could not have imagined or falling down in the street because my legs wouldn't hold me up. Mm -hmm. That could be a possibility. Right. Yeah, I love I love that story. And and so so mine it's I will say a little similar too because um, I'm originally from Colombia, and I moved to the states when I was 16. And I think that's when I started losing my hair. Um, actually, while doing this interview, I was uh, sharing this story with one of the doctors, and I was telling her how I moved, in, moved here at 16. I didn't speak the language, and then I stayed by myself because my parents uh, moved to another country. And so she looks at me, she's like, oh, no stressful at all. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, at the time, that was just the, the normal to me. So I just, you know, lived my life and, you know, kept going. And obviously, I mean, I went through some challenges, but I, at the time, I just saw it like, well, this is my life and that's it. And so I, coincidentally, I started losing my hair right after, I want to say, like, at the big, like, late teens, um, early 20s. And I thought I was losing my hair because of the relationship that I was in, because it was really stressful. And um, my dream growing up was always to be a broadcaster. I wanted to be like Oprah. Uh, Oprah was my idol, still is. Um, and when I moved here, that kind of that got shattered so quickly because I started losing my hair. And I got diagnosed with alopecia. So I thought to myself, well, nobody's going to want me on television. You have, have no hair. You know, something's wrong with me. I didn't speak the language. Uh, you know, I don't know how to communicate. It was kind of like, whoa, you, you're done. Right. Um, 
And so it took me years to, to get over that, that, um, I guess, self doubt of, um, yeah, that nobody was going to love me and nobody was going to like me. And, you know, I went through, through a lot of that. And I was just thinking about it the other day. Cause I mean, I actually have a podcast and, um, now that I'm doing all these interviews and I'm having so much fun, yeah. now I get why that was my passion. Yeah. Um, and, but I let go of it forever. I mean, I went to school for business and I was working in human resources. Um, then I became a coach. But now that I'm getting to do these interviews, I'm fascinated <laughs> that, I, that, I, that I get to do this now. And yes, I still have alopecia and this is, you know, hair that I bought. But, but I have that mindset now, like you said, like you train yourself to, to believe in yourself, to love yourself and, you know, to still live your life despite the challenges. Absolutely. And that's sort of the, not the reverse, but it, that happened to me later because as you know, we were, you know, this whole summit about, you know, how we deal with hair losses. That was my second challenge. My second near death experience was uh, here I was busy living my life, you know, doing as an international fashion designer, selling my products all over the world. And I caught nothing more exciting. I was 54 at the time. I'm 61 going on 62 now. Um, but what happened was I caught mono and it, it literally crashed my immune system. There's a marker in your body that is called CRP, which is Cree reactive protein. And mm -hmm. it's supposed to be between one and five on a healthy human being. And mm -hmm. when I checked into the hospital, it was 465. Wow. They said, you were next to dead. They said anything, you know, that I was going to touch, you know, like on the countertop or whatever it, I had no immune system. It was going to kill me. And with that illness, because there was massive inflammation and, you know, mm -hmm. I had infection and they were beating my poor body up with antibiotics. And, and then my, I got, um, uh, hospital acquired pneumonia. My lungs failed. They had to drain my lungs and kind of re I was stuck in the hospital for two full months. And, you know, with all of the different doctors in the hospital checking me over, the rheumatologist said to me, oh, he says, hmm, 30 days since the inflammation started. Um, when it's 60, 90 days, he said, 90 days, he says, are you losing your hair yet? I said, what do you mean? And in the week following, my hair really did start to fall out. Mm -hmm. um, the girls at the office had been sort of like pulling off little bits off of my shoulders. You know, when I walked by and they would see just loose bits of hair. And um, I was so shocked that it was just coming out in clumps. And I went to see the hair doctor. Um, I didn't want to take pharma meds. I didn't really want to do the extensions. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really want to try um uh with the wigs yet i was and i was contracted to all of the tv stations which meant i physically had to show up for my live tv shows and that was terrifying and i thought what am i going to do in fact once i flew uh, right after my first initial sort of like hair loss I flew to Germany and, you know, I, I was going to work with the producers on what my shows were going to look like. And they said, oh, we want to shoot a video today. Oh, no. So there, I had some flight. I felt like I had three hairs on this side and three hairs on this side. I'd just gotten off the plane. And they said, go in, you know, pick, pick something. This is what we're going to do. And I walked into the uh, film studio and they had a white background and they put the they put the uh, fan on to blow my hair. And so I had like my three little strands of hair blowing here on the white background and three strands on this side. I'm like, oh my, oh my goodness. And then they put, you know, dance music on and said dance. And of course I've got a smile on my face. I am a, you know, a broadcasting professional. Yeah. But I was not happy. And mm -hmm. that was actually one of the photographs I use on my website to show my first like, you know, how you can, you, your face can look beautiful, but you can have hardly any hair. And what happened was my naturopath felt sorry for me. And he said, try this. And he made a formulation and it made my hair grow back like crazy. So mm -hmm. I went back to him and the manufacturer after, and I said, there are some people out there in the world who will want this who maybe benefited so i started developing sydney mar wellness okay. and 
Fabulous Hair, Skin and Nails is my first vitamin that helped me grow back my hair. And this is was part of my journey to my personal journey on how I navigated this and, and how I can help, you know, women and men with, um, you know, sometimes you can help them and sometimes you can't. Like sometimes I have guys coming to me and saying, you know, like, how do I know if it's going to work? And I said, well, first of all, the hair follicle, if it's dead, I can't help you. Mm -hmm. If it's just asleep and we need to stimulate it, then we, we can work on that. And the mm -hmm. only way, if they really want, they have to go and do um, like an in-skin in test. We don't do mm -hmm. it. Uh, the medical doctors have to do it. But, um, you know, we all look for remedies for how we're going to look and feel our most beautiful best, right? And that is the only thing that's important. Whether or not it's, you know, uh, taking the time to uh, be in prayer, whoever you, whoever is the... Uh, you know the um, the God of your of your mm -hmm. belief, mm -hmm. whether or not it's morning pages, whether or not it's learning to love yourself a little bit more and to cut yourself some slack and get that rest or or drink your water. Um, that's why we were talking about I created my reboot your radiance because mm -hmm. even though I have these really incredible therapeutic caliber vitamins, if I can't get people to drink water if I can't help people get a better night's sleep yeah. or teach them how to turn all of their electronics into night shift a couple of hours before they go to bed, then my vitamins aren't going to do anybody any good. It's really a holistic approach mm -hmm. for taking a moment saying I'm worthy. Yeah. I can take five minutes out of my day and make sure that I have a, a little bite to eat that, you know, that I, that I love myself into you know help the healthiest most beautiful version of myself possible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and you just uh touched on something that that i want to emphasize is that i created the summit to provide tools and resources uh, for people living with uh, medical hair loss i insist when i say living instead of dealing because i want to make light of um this condition like losing our hair should not stop us from living our life um, but I also think that, or at least from my personal experience, I spent years trying to grow my hair back. So I put on all my energy, my time, my money, everything on getting my hair back. And I forgot about all the other parts of my life. And so I really think it's a, it's a holistic approach because if you're, you know, you could be doing all these treatments, but if you're not sleeping, how do you think that's going to show up? If, you know, you're doing treatments also, but you're not nourishing your body, how is this going to show up? So uh, what I want to provide uh, with the summit, uh, you know, I can't say your hair is going to grow back. I don't know if that's going to happen. But I, what I do know is that there are tools and resources out there that can help you live the life that you want to live. You know, they're going to help you cope with the loss, right? They're going to help you um, connect with community of people that are going through the same thing. And so that's, that's why I created this. And I think your, your story is amazing because I, I, I can tell that you did a lot of different things to get where you are today. Um, and I love that you're sharing that now with uh, Reboot Your Radiance. So thank you so much. Yes. And you know what I'd also like to um, mention to the viewers? And as I've learned more and more about um, hair loss, as I've learned more and more about how we nourish ourselves, what's really interesting is that what I discovered, and I think this is really important, is that we have to remember our hair is decoration. So how we decorate our bodies mm -hmm. is totally up to us, our version of beauty, how we see beauty, because it's not a vital organ, which is why in many ways the hair and the hair follicles kind of sacrifice themselves. Like if we're stressed and, and the energy in our bodies need to come to our vital organs, it's going to do it. And mm -hmm. Your hair is simply decoration. How you choose to decorate your body, yeah. totally up to you, but not necessary to being alive. Right. It's right, and I also had to create that separation of starting to see my hair as an accessory. Um, so Because I had to shift the mindset. I had to shift the mindset of something's wrong with me to I love myself and I'm not my hair. 
like I would look at myself in the mirror and, and tell myself before leaving the house, Valerie, you're not your hair. You're not your hair. And I had to create that separation to stop seeing my hair as myself or, you know, I'm missing something and something's wrong with me because that was really affecting me. Um, and now the way I see it is, you know, like you said, it's, it's an accessory. So right now I, you know, I'm wearing this color and why not, but I want to explore other colors and I have never worn a week, a wig because I live in Miami and it's really hot. Um, but I do admire women that, um, explore and try different styles and different colors. I think it's amazing. I just never done it. Um, but it's definitely something that I want to do. Well, and so fun. I mean, you know, talking about being on QVC, they have some, they've shown some really beautiful wigs. That looks like so much fun, you know, and you can just change it up and you're cut from short to, you know, all these different looks. And I thought, yeah, that looks like fun. So, <laughs> yeah. so tell us uh, about Reboot Your Radiance, because I know this is the generous gift that you're going to give to our audience. So why are we going to be able to find on this program? Well, Reboot Your Radiance is all about my seven key steps for achieving optimal health. So as a former elite athlete, as an international fashion designer, needing to have all of my energy, you can do these things very quickly. So it is my seven key steps. Um, I start with making sure and teaching about the importance of water and why it's uh, wonderful for you, for your skin, for your uh, joints, for your brain, for detoxing, etc. So there are seven emails that come that talk about each subject, um, whether or not it's water, um, how to make healthy choices in terms of P being pH balance, what's an alkaline uh, choice of food as opposed to acidic. Acidic ones aren't bad, for instance, and I need to explain a little bit to people so that if they can go grocery shopping and have say 65 or like two thirds of their basket alkaline and one third uh, acidic, like in the tomatoes, etc. Mm -hmm. they're gonna be fine. Whatever they cook is fine. So it's not complicated. So it's really fun. It comes with a, um, a lovely uh, sort of 10 page PDF that will explain all of the steps, the supporting emails and a little calendar. So it's what my, my calendar is a little bit of a cheat sheet. So it, you can count off, how many glasses of water that you drank. Um, and you can see I've got a little bit of lemon in here and that is, has what we call an anionic effect. It actually converts, you would think it's acidic, but it isn't, it actually helps your body be more alkaline. So we do recommend that you have lemons in your water. Uh, so on this little calendar, you can sort of like improve. You know, when you mark it down, it gets done. So like, yeah. I drank that. I'm that totally a checklist person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that way it can be in your, you know, folded up in your purse or your back pocket if you're at the grocery store and you want to say, oh, is that an alkaline uh, veggie or uh, an acidic one? Because sometimes people don't know. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things that when you start with it, it's going to give you the easy steps so that you can have your busy life. You can nourish yourself properly, learn how to get a better night's sleep and get some exercise and why uh, walking is a really, um, a much better for you exercise than previously thought. I mean, even friends of mine who were Olympic runners said, it's just not recognized. It is so good for you just to get out for a 20 minute walk. And as I was saying to you earlier, I mean, I've been very busy with my new puppy and I'm out five times a day for 20 minutes. And that may means I'm walking an additional awesome. hour and a half a day. That's wonderful. Yeah. I love walking too. Um, but here in Miami is so difficult because it's so hot all the time. But when I lived in Seattle, I loved walking everywhere. I think I didn't have a car for years. I just love being out with nature and, you know, I love it. Well, thank you, Simi, so much for coming to the show. This has been amazing to have you. And I cannot wait to download and reboot your radiance. It sounds, you know, that I'm going to learn some your tips and tricks because I would love to look like you someday. <laughs> I cannot believe like how youthful and energetic and, you know, you just, you know, have this really great energy about you that I, I, I want to thank you for sharing with us today. 
Oh, you're welcome. I mean, it is been, has been my purpose to help everybody look and feel their very best. So if this helps people do that, then I've done my job. So thank you so much, Valerie.